Another weekend and yet more twists and turns in the League One promotion race. I will cut to the chase and say straight away it was Plymouth who had the best weekend. And boy, did they need it. The Pilgrims won their home game against Portsmouth to move back to the top of the table. The two teams either side of them at the start of play, Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich, both dropped points in a 2-2 draw at Portman Road. The perfect set of results was completed for Plymouth as, for the first time in 16 games, Paul Warren's red-hot derby team lost and were overtaken in the table by a rampant Bolton side who won 5-0 at Peterborough. It's quite the bounce back actually for Plymouth who had probably the worst week of anybody last time out. The short-term picture for Stephen Schumacher's side was that they were overtaken at the top of the table last week after they lost that big head-to-head -head against Sheffield Wednesday. Then out goes Dan Scar, the centre-back injured. He's off to see a specialist. Worst of all though, goalkeeper and star player Michael Cooper was ruled out for the entire rest of the season with a knee injury. Huge fan of Cooper. We've bigged him up on the channel over and again. He's been fabulous in goal for Plymouth. And I would suggest probably, other than Bannon at Sheffield Wednesday, and I know they've survived without him for January, he'd likely be the player that any of the teams challenging for promotion would miss the most. So Plymouth needed some good news this week, some ticks in the box, and they got plenty of them. Stephen Schumacher nailed his team selection. He rested Matete, Mumba and Azaz at the start of a vital three-game week. I did raise my eyebrows, but it worked a treat. Still took the three points. And Argyle affirmed that this insane home record of theirs is holding up in adversity. That's 14 wins out of 15 now for Plymouth in the league this season at home park. Maybe they could have tested him a little bit more. Pompey had 23 shots indeed, but it'll be a huge lift for Plymouth reserve keeper Callum Burton to get a win on his first start in goal in this run-in with those huge shoes of Michael Cooper to fill. So Sheffield Wednesday's draw down at Ipswich means they've now given up a two-point lead at the top to Plymouth. But there is still plenty to be positive for the Owls, who do hold a game in hand. Actually, still have a minutely higher points per game than Plymouth as a result. There's many different ways to look at this if you drill in. And of course, Darren Moore and the Wednesday fans will be disappointed to have given up a two-goal lead at Portman Road. But they did survive a missed penalty from Ipswich at 0-0. Big picture, even though Plymouth probably take the bragging rights over this weekend in isolation, Wednesday are still in very good nick. And in that battle of this month of head-to-heads between the top three, Wednesday have taken four points to Ipswich's two and Plymouth's one. For Ipswich, the draw represents just the latest in a growing list of missed opportunities. Yes, again, in isolation, Coming back from 2-0 down is something to be pleased about, but maybe the missed penalty evens that out. And in the bigger picture, we've said this for a long while now, Ipswich just have way less momentum than every other team up there in the top six. In the first few games of Ipswich's wobble, it was much easier to be able to try and explain things away in terms of the drop-off and make an argument, look, things are going to come back round. But Town have now failed to win 10 out of their last 14 matches in the EFL. And that leaves me with the following conclusion. And that is that given the pace of most of the informed teams around them, Ipswich carrying this kind of run during the middle of a season is either going to make automatic promotion impossible or... It's going to require an extremely points-heavy winning streak pretty much right through to the end of the season. For all the talk of nice patterns and good coaching, Ipswich are simply not winning with the consistency 
of any of their rivals. Below Ipswich, the rampaging bull that has been Derby County has been replaced by the, well, rampaging bull that is Bolton. They are now in to fourth spot. It's the first bump in the road for the Rams in a long while. And look, whilst it certainly doesn't represent them coming off the rails, the talk about the automatic push we've been having does require very, very little margin for error. For a while now, we've had our eyes on this tricky run of away games for Derby. Wickham away was the first. That's ended in defeat with Barnsley and Plymouth as the next two on the road. The good news for Derby is that surrounding those kind of tricky away games, there are four winnable looking home games out of the next five in the EFL. Those will need to be leveraged, but you can't help feeling for the Derby fans who are looking at the top two, which they're perfectly within their rights to do so, they're going to need to win one or other of these difficult away games, maybe including the most difficult away game in League One, away at Plymouth in six games time. Finally, we'll appease the Bolton fans this week. Of course we're not, I don't appease fans. We've got to talk about Bolton. They deserve to be talked about. I said last time, we'll talk more about the Wanderers when they give us cause to, and we just can't ignore them this week. On their 5,000th league appearance in English football, Wonder has registered what I would suggest is actually the most impressive result of the day, hammering Peterborough, a uh, promotion playoff challenger in their own right. 5-0 in their own backyard. The current run of six wins in eight for Bolton is certainly in line with what it's going to take to get over the line up at the top of the table this season. And the additions in the striking roster in the January window was certainly very, very positive. Yes, Bolton have played more games than everyone. I think two more than both Plymouth and Derby as well. But they are very much putting themselves in the conversation and win six of their next eight. And I'm sure they'll be even higher up in the conversation. I am loving this League One promotion race. I'm loving covering it pretty much every Sunday on this channel. Do make sure you hit subscribe to make sure all these videos get recommended to you. I think this is the most entertaining top of the table chase in any of the EFL divisions. Get your views as ever down there in the comments. I've tried to keep the vibe of the analysis really nice and balanced. Do me a favour, help me out. I'd love the comments to match up with that vibe. So try your best by looking at more than A, just the club you support and B, the best case scenario for the club you support. A week is a long time in the EFL, especially in League One. Last time out, I was very high on Sheffield Wednesday, very high on Derby, not so high on Plymouth, not so high on Ipswich. It's all changed this time, but click up here to see exactly what the mood was just seven days ago.